So um, welcome everyone. It's lovely um, to be joined by our honorary advisors and trustees and staff from all of our offices this morning, which is fantastic. And um, in true sort of set style, we wanted to provide hopefully um, a quick briefing of the upcoming conference, which as you all know now is going to be held online. Um, and, um, and then we're going to also introduce you to the platform, which will be hosting a, uh, the conference on online um, and hopefully uh, allow you to kind of spend the next few days and, and the week ahead familiarizing yourself with it before um, the conference begins um, on the 1st of October. So that being said, I shall push on. Um, if we have any questions, please could you um, write them in the chat box and we'll try and respond through that. And if not, I'll pause at certain points as well and just see if there are any queries. Um, we'll move a little bit at pace just because um, it's the platform side of things, which is the least familiar to us all. Um, and we just like to make sure there's enough time for everybody to run through that. But again, if there are any other questions or you'd like to go back over anything or have a more one-to-one -one, um, walkthrough of the technology, then um, we're more than happy to do so in the coming days. So, um, yes, welcome to Sets Annual Conference uh, team briefing. Um, as you know, um, the conference in a nutshell is going to be held on the um, 1st, 2nd, 5th and 6th. So we've got our weekend in between uh, to rest and drink tea. Um, we're going to hold it in the mornings uh, in UK time, so 9am to 1.30pm approximately um, every day. And that's to ensure that we can um, hopefully allow as many um, participants from across our country um, offices, but also um, more broadly to attend the conference um, in that time. And, and obviously with time zones, we, uh, we'll try to hit a kind of optimal time for everyone there. Um, the conference will be held online through uh, the Who Below platform, which as I said, we'll introduce you to later. And um, Zoom is how we are hosting um, the different speaker sessions and breakout sessions. Um, but please be assured that uh, all security measures are being put in place to ensure we don't have any issues with uh, safeguarding or um, anybody joining that, um, that hasn't registered or shouldn't be at the conference. Um, as always, we expect to have 300 plus delegates each day, and that includes speakers and staff and obviously yourselves as well. Um, and the ticket sales are going really well and we're particularly pleased that this year we've been able to offer a bursary system for um, LMIC health workers. So they have been uh, submitting very short applications to us um, explaining why the conference is um, of importance to them and would be useful to their learning. And uh, we're pleased to say that some I think we're right in saying that we've offered it to over 100 uh, LMIC health workers so far. Um, from all around uh, the world. So we're, we'll be excited to show um, the results of that at the end and kind of provide a briefing after the conference on who attended. Um, to that note, uh, generally, this is who attends the conference and actually the split uh, looks quite like this this year again. This is from last year, but um, as I said, the split's fairly equal again this year. So academia being um, one of the highest proportions, but obviously very closely followed by the NHS civil society and non-profit, and then government and arm's length bodies. Um, a range of management levels and positions within those, um, joined by Ministry of Health officials, researchers, clinical staff, of course, um, and hopefully uh, government departments as well from the UK and overseas, um, as well as being um, joined by many of our key supporters and partners, um, including um, Johnson & Johnson, Health Education England, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So a really diverse set of um, attendees and speakers. And hopefully, as the platform will show later this morning, um, there'll be plenty of opportunity to connect with um, all of these delegates and, uh, and really kind of share experiences and, and, uh, and join the dots between us all. Um, in terms of the content, for the conference this year, um, we are looking um, at a decade of delivery. So um, we know that we're following the UNGA very closely um, and uh, we're about to enter this decade of delivery as a key moment in achieving those SDGs. Um, so we have decided to split the content into two main streams. Um, the first being quality, which will look at the health partnership model. So we will explore whether this is an appropriate form for doing this, how we can adapt that and improve upon it. We'll be looking at quality improvement and health systems. 
um, really with the support from WHO colleagues in particular, but also um, colleagues uh, from across the health partnership community, including Tom Bashford and Kerry Jones, I know you're quite familiar with. And also looking at the training model and in particular capacity development and the use of digital technology and um, for that. So again, some really exploratory workshops looking at different models and methods um, for training, which hopefully we think will present some new opportunities for health partnerships and volunteers going forward. Um, the second stream is inclusion, and this will run on the uh, Monday and Tuesday of the conference. And this is looking at gender equality and social inclusion, migration and mobility with a particular focus as well on fragile settings and the politics of health or the power dynamics that we see um, within our programme work in particular um, and exploring some of the nuances, but also asking some of those questions which we know um, health partnerships and volunteers um, sometimes uh, feel are difficult to ask or difficult to explore. So hopefully this will be quite a challenging um, couple of days on these three themes in particular and, um, and the speakers chosen are from a wide range of backgrounds. So again, we hope we were able to challenge um, some of the perceptions around that and offer some, some key learning there. Um, the agenda, which now I'm looking at it, is, uh, is rather colourful. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's here for you all to see oh, and um, we'll be sharing that um, again in, in a wider briefing pack that will follow um, this session. Um, but as you can see, it all laid out here. So quality is in pink and yellow, and that runs on the Thursday and Friday mornings um, with keynotes um, across spread out through the mornings. And then the Monday and Tuesday are the inclusion um, set of days. Um, you'll also see here that we have a Wales and Africa um, conference highlighted. So we do also have fringe events happening in the afternoon and weekend time when set actual conference won't be running. Um, so really pleased to support key partners like Wales for Africa and hopefully um, the Myanmar UK Alliance and also perhaps um, throwing a spotlight on our Somaliland work in particular during these fringe events which will be open for all delegates to attend and they'll be streamed on the platform so again hopefully easily accessible to all those um, in attendance at the conference and uh, working closely with key partners to bring those to fruition. Um, in terms of keynotes, we're really pleased again to um, have a video opening from um, Dr. Tedros uh, to open us on the Thursday morning of the conference. So that's being filmed as we speak and uh, we'll receive it soon, hopefully. So again, given everything that's going on, we're delighted to have that. And we'll also be joined, um, these are just a few of our keynotes, but we'll be joined by Navina Evans, who um, is the current um, CEO of the East London NHS Trust and uh, but a huge supporter of global engagement work um, who is taking on the position um, of Health Education England's new CEO and she'll be her first day in post and um, will be the 1st of October and she'll be giving the keynote that day so again really pleased to have them um, to have her there and talking. We've got Dr Sarah Rasser um, and uh, Richard Walker who are both um, health partnership voices so they um, are, have been influential in this highly successful Tanzania Northumbria partnership and they'll be having a dialogue with each other about the success of that and how they've brought that to fruition. Um, we've got Diana Dalton, she is the head of social inclusion at the SCDO. Um, she'll be giving a keynote but also talking in one of the workshops as well, presenting on um, the UK government's approach to uh, social inclusion and gender equality. Um, so again, hopefully a really insightful presentation. And um, I'm sure as many of you recognise, the Minister of Health um, and Sports in Myanmar, Dr. Mayan Chetwe, will be joining us as well on the Thursday morning to present. Um, and we've got a few other exciting keynotes up our sleeves. Um, so hopefully uh, there'll be many more dotted throughout the days, which will, again, draw in delegates and, uh, and uh, bring the sparkle to the conference, um, including um, some brilliant keynotes from um, LMIC health workers who've been part of health partnerships um, in the past. So again, presenting that personal voice, which we, I think, all enjoyed so much at last year's conference. Um, in terms of sponsors and exhibitors, as I mentioned, we'll have Health Education England, Johnson & Johnson and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with us, um, who again are key um, conference partners this year. We're also joined by a wide variety of exhibitors from um, NHS Scotland and the Scottish Global Health Collaborative um, to Nursing Now, uh, VSO, 
um, and our own uh, Dorcas Butter, who will be talking about her work um, in Global Health Dorcas um, as consultant teachers. So um, there are, again, more um, that will be unveiled during the conference as well, but this will hopefully provide a really interactive exhibitor and sponsor space, which, um, as we'll see on the platform, uh, is hopefully as interactive as a, as a physical table um, and allows for just as much um, business card swapping and, uh, and sort of to get conferring about different initiatives that are happening and ways that they might be able to support our partnerships as well. So again, hopefully plenty to keep you occupied in the networking break. Um, as always, um, for uh, the FET community, um, we hope that um, in particular, attending the conference um, allows you to learn about key global health concepts, um, hear from experts from around the world, learn about our community more broadly, um, of course, network and make connections with that community. And um, yeah, and to attend is to support uh, the colleagues who've worked in it as well. It's this year is, is a really wide team from all across the organisation. All teams have been uh, represented in the planning of this and have worked um, extremely hard with long hours so far um, to secure speakers and, and uh, make sure that the content is engaging and interactive on this new virtual platform. So um, again, if you um, yeah, are able to attend and show support, we're really grateful for that. Um, the next couple of slides are um, set staff orientated just because it's a little bit of an overview of um, the briefing for the key roles. So I hope honorary advisors and trustees will forgive me for a couple of minutes just spent um, talking through this. But again, it gives you an overview of sort of the background of the work that goes on behind the scenes. Um, so much like a normal conference, um, all uh, set staff are given key roles during the conference to support um, the conference team and the, the speakers and delegates more broadly. Um, so this year, again, in true set fashion, we've got um, a lovely timetable for everybody, but we've also got some key roles which we've set out here. And um, I've sort of highlighted them. I won't run through them because we'll all be uh, given a document on this. But um, just to say that we will have people monitoring the live feed, which again will make more sense in a minute, um, to make sure that any posts that are uh, posted by delegates or speakers are answered in a timely fashion and we can report any concerns about potentially any inappropriate posts or that don't relate to the conference. And we'll also have set table representatives, so those who are able to um, remain close to our exhibitor table virtually. Um, and answer any questions from delegates or signpost to any of the relevant resources that they might be looking for. So this is just what will be going on in the background um, behind it all. And this is what the uh, timetable looks like roughly, um, and there's a few changes since um, this was taken, but um, as you'll see, we've got um, brilliant spaces in the networking breaks um, for when our country programmes work will be highlighted by our country directors. So um, each uh, country office is running a table discussion in the break. We'll also be having um, UK PHS discussions. So our hope is that by um, hopefully the 28th of September, we will have launched um, the UK Partnership for Health System Strengthening um, programme uh, in the UK and, and across the world globally. Um, and we'll be able to discuss that and answer questions from delegates encouraging people to um, take part and and uh, apply essentially to all of the open grants that we'll have um, there. So, and we'll also have that set table that I mentioned. So I'm gonna pause there. That sort of brings me to the end of the overview of the conference. And as I said, there'll be um, a, a PDF version or as I see more in depth than this, but a PDF version of these notes and the conference briefing that um, we'll send out in the next couple of days to you all. So you'll also have this to hand and there'll be some additional information in there as well, taken from our annual report, um, which will again provide you with a bit of an overview of the key highlights from the last year for SET if, um, if you network and, and need that to hand. Um, but are there any questions from anyone at this point or any thoughts? No, good, I'll take silence. Hopefully that means I've done a good job. If not, I've stunned you all into silence, which um, for now I'll take as a positive. And uh, if you have any other thoughts, um, yeah, please do send them in the chat or, or drop me an email um, later on. Um, so the next part of the morning session is going to introduce you to the online platform. And we're going to do a kind of step-by-step -step walkthrough. I know some of you have done this already, but what we'll do once we've hopefully got you all set up on the platform is then 
talk you through some of the different areas that are on this platform. Um, and essentially, it's a, it's a website um, with, with different features on it, just to sort of clarify that as well. So um, I'm going to ask Raquel, if you don't mind, to share your screen and she's going to demonstrate the process. So I think yesterday, or the day before yesterday, you all received hopefully um, an email from us um, with a link to sign up to the platform. Um, and if you could all, if you haven't already, um, click on that link now, that will take you to um, the screen that Raquel's um, going to share. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope everyone's okay. Um, so we're going to just really quickly run you through, um, through how to get you set up on the platform and just give you a quick overview of the different features. Um, we don't have time to probably cover everything, but we'll also take questions. I'll pause at the end of every bit to see if, if there's any problems. So you should all have received an email that looks a bit like this. And if you click join the community, it should then take you to a site that looks like this and basically invite you to fill out some basic information about yourselves. So is everyone, has everyone got an email? Does anyone have any problems with that? Are, are delegates meant to do fill all this in before the event, like now or, or just like on the day of the event? So, so, Sorry, that's gone. <laughs> no. um, so we'll be doing a session like this for delegates next Tuesday. So okay. we'll try and get them all to set themselves up. Okay. Um, Alice for here. Sorry, I don't have a link. I don't. I haven't found a link. I wonder if it came to the right email address. Okay. Um, could you send it to Charlotte maybe on the Zoom chat? And Charlotte, you can add it to Hubala or double check. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks, Sarah. So if you all fill out this initial bit, you can go back and edit. So it doesn't have to be um, that this, what you put in now, is the beginning and the end of everything. Uh, apologies, but I, I got your mail, Raquel, but I don't see the link that you're referring to. I just saw the, the Zoom for this, for this session. So you should have gotten an email that looks like this. No, I don't have that. It may well be in your um, junk folder, it, unfortunately, the way that it's, um, because it's yeah. coming through from a platform, it may well be there. I think a couple of people have found it in there. I okay, think. well, I'll, I'll have a go. I'll find it's out. Not, and I'll, I'll send it through again. Oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, my word. When you, when you find it in your junk folder, you have to move it to the inbox to activate the link. Junk is a revelation. I've found lots of things. <laughs> No, I haven't. I, I haven't found it. Okay, let me just, let me try and send that out again. Thank you. Um, so, for everyone else, if you make your way through this form, and as I said, you can go back and edit the different bits afterwards. So, you need to consent to the recordings, and then this next bit, essentially... Oh, I found you, right. Is that okay, Anne? Yes, apologies, I found it. Thank you. It's a separate email entirely. Thank you. Um, so on this screen, you can essentially select some of the different interests or areas within the conference that you'd like to highlight to other delegates. So then we'll show you how, depending on the interest that you select here, um, people can search for you. And um, it's a bit of a matchmaking service that we do through the platform. So I'm going to select a couple here. Um, there's quite a few options, <laughs> so don't feel like you need to choose too many. But once you click finish, it will take you to this screen where you can have a bit of a run through of the different features. So as the pop-ups come up here, you will see that we have the reception, which is the kind of main landing page of, I'm going to skip that and just run you guys through it, but um, you will land on the reception page which is um, kind of our landing site with all the key information um, about the conference. And this will be more populated uh, once the conference begins and we, we'll kind of, we have all the content on. Then there is an event feed, which um, hopefully is 
quite familiar to us. So this will look like a Facebook feed, essentially, or a workplace feed. So there will be an opportunity to post photos, um, to introduce different people to the conference. We will be running some polls and we really hope that this becomes a bit of a hub for interaction during the conference. And it's a place where delegates and speakers and exhibitors and sponsors can all come together and discuss different um, parts of what's happening. Then we have the agenda here. So this again will all be more populated um, when it comes to it, but essentially for each of the sessions you will be able to see a bit of a description here um, of what is going on and then if I just show you Do you want the link to the demo one? Yeah. Um, yeah. So what it will look like is like this, essentially, and you will just click join session and a live stream will begin here. So in this case, it's on Vimeo, but as Charlotte was mentioning before, it will actually come up on Zoom. Um, here you'll be able to see the description of the different um, sessions as well as the speakers and there will be a live chat similarly as to what we have on Zoom right now. Um, we will use this for Q&A during the sessions so there'll be an opportunity to post questions anonymously but also openly so others can, can respond and interact and again to run some polls that we will do during all the sessions. So that's what that bit will look like. Um, hopefully it's all very straightforward and you just click through and it will load onto your screens. So yeah, hopefully there'll be no problems there. Um, next here, you can have a look at the different speakers. So we started uploading some, but not all. Um, so for each of the different speakers, you'll be able to click on their profiles and see what their job is, um, where they are affiliated to and a quick bio. So as well as any Twitter or social media handles that they've chosen to share, so you can look them up that way as well. Um, attendees, um, so this is one of the main features we really wanted to share with you today and to make sure um, that was clear to everyone. So here you'll be able to see all the different um, delegates that are attending. So that includes, here we can see the FET team, exhibitors, speakers, um, trustees and honorary advisors, as well as other delegates that have signed up. So in order to connect with different people, what I can do is, so for example, if I click on Charlotte here, I get the quick um, bio that we just created before with the different interests. Um, so you can see those at the bottom there. And I can either choose to chat. So this very much works again, like a social media chat function. Um, so like chatting on Facebook, I can just send an instant message that way. And the green dot shows that she's online, so I'd be hoping um, for an answer. Um, the other way you can do this is clicking meet, which will allow you to schedule a meeting for a different time. So if you feel like you found someone interesting you want to talk to, but you can't do it right now or you want to do it after a session, you can schedule a meeting here. Um, so I would say, yes, I want to meet and I'll send the request. I need to describe. Um, it's not gonna let me, <laughs> it's chosen a long time. Um, and I, that would send the request. So at that point, Charlotte would receive a notification saying that I've requested a meeting and she can choose to accept or not. And I will be able to see my meetings come up. I'll get a notification as well when she accepts it there. Is that all okay so far? I like I've rushed through a little bit. Any questions? No? Okay. I'll take silence, it's okay. Um, the other main way through which you can interact with other delegates and speakers, um, as well as sponsors and exhibitors, is through this feature of the networking lounge. So these are, again, this is a bit of an example, so we'll set this up slightly differently on the day, but these are 
tables that which are meant to allow for kind of the informal networking that usually takes place at the conference. So you can kind of take a virtual seat at one of the tables, so to say. Um, so I can see, for example, that Charlotte's joined this table. So if I think, oh, that would be an interesting conversation to join because I've had a look at her profile and think that would be good, then I can click and that would take us to a chat very much like a Zoom or a FaceTime call. Um, we can do video or just audio and we can just sit at the table, have a chat and they're allowed um, half an hour essentially to try and keep people moving and not stay at the same tables for too long so different people get a chance to talk with others. Um, but it's meant to be a, a space that's quite informal and that will just allow you to drop in and out of different conversations and meet people without necessarily having to schedule a meeting or have a more formal chat. So we will be running some of these around specific set areas. So as you can see here, we'll probably have one dedicated to UKPHS, where the FET grants team, um, or some members of the FET grants team, will be stationed, so to say, and we'll be running some kind of Q&A and formal sessions with delegates who are interested in learning more about UKPHS. Um, can I ask a quick question? Yes, of course. Sorry, just on a previous uh, slide uh, or previous uh, tab. Um, so if, for instance, there's already all four of these chairs are taken up, that means you have to wait for one to vacate before you can join it? Yes. So it'll be limited mm -hmm. to four people. And um, do you just sit there and in case someone turns up to network? Yes, pretty much. Um, so we will have more of these and they will be bigger. So yeah, sure. we think most people that want to participate will be able to participate just because in the breaks we imagine that a lot of people will just be around their house doing whatever they need yeah. to do so we don't expect everyone to to participate in these networking tables but yes that's essentially how it works although after half an hour you'll get kind of kicked off the table so to say <laughs> to oh, make, okay um, see, so it's half an hour fine all right yeah, which is um, the most of the networking breaks anyways so, okay okay cool so yeah someone would just sit there waiting for other people to come up and and that video automatically starts or do you ask if you want to run a video you accept um if you want the video okay um, okay fine and just on that previous tab with the um setting up uh, a meeting i just wondered if the uh if if when you set up a meeting you're able to add that your outlook calendar to your phone calendar for instance does it have a Yes. Does it connect up to seven API? Okay. So here and now, for example, I can see this meeting that I just scheduled with Charlotte. And I should be able to try to do it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Meeting adds to calendar and I can okay. download it onto my Outlook. Okay. And and just to note, Naomi, you can also do that on the agenda. So um because there, is, there are three sessions sometimes at a time running um, and so you can actually download or sort of add them into your Outlook calendar or, or Google as it says as well so people can move it into um, their work calendars just to make sure they don't miss anything because we, as Raquel said, we know that some people won't sit on the platform for the whole time or will move in and out and um, we're quite aware of delegates already who are asking to do that so hopefully that sort of again there's more prompts. And just to highlight as well, there's, um, as you'll see just above Raquel's mouse, there's a little quick guide button, a little blue question mark, and that's on every single page. Um, and that's just a really simple, hopefully intuitive, um, click through sort of guide and, and video um, guide that Hublot have put together. So again, there's always prompts around um, the platform to help um, sort of signpost and explain how to do that, and to, uh, particularly for networking, which I think is and probably one of the newest elements that uh, delegates won't have come across before. So um, hopefully, again, there's so many prompts and, and guides and how to's around the place that um, that will also enable sort of more interaction and, and ease of access. Thanks. Sounds good. Great. Um, so just to look at the final um, features of this. So the last two pages are our sponsors and exhibitors. So here essentially by clicking on, so most of them are in the process of building their profiles. I'm going to try and pick one that's more complete than the others. Um, so with the different exhibitors, you can just click on their profile as I've just done, and you will be able to see um, what they're doing, kind of any videos or particular content that they wanted to, to share, as well as social media links, website that you can see here. Um, 
in order to chat to them, if you are interested in their work, you can click on a specific person. Um, so if there's someone that has a focus area which is of particular interest to you, you can directly meet or chat with them as we've done with delegates. Um, you can also click more generally and it will just take you to one of the different representatives. And if you are interested, but I don't really want to have that conversation right now, you can also share your details. So by clicking here, it's almost like dropping off a business card essentially. So if I click confirm, they would then receive a notification saying, Raquel is interested in your work and for scheduled contact details, you should follow up. And that would allow them to follow up with you either during at some other point during the conference or afterwards. And you can filter through the different pages essentially of the organizations that are joining us. Um, again, some are a bit more built up than others, but um, there's also contact details. So if you want to follow up separately outside of the platform, that is also possible. Um, any questions? I just wanted to make a comment. Oh, so I just wanted to make a comment if I could. I mean, to some extent, this is going to facilitate networking more than a face-to-face -face event, isn't it? Some of this, I think, I mean, obviously there are a number of challenges, but it looks fantastic. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, so we hope so. Um, for people that might be a bit shyer in um, this, like in-person events, hopefully this is quite a good way um, to get them engaged. And it's also much more targeted. So the fact that you can search for, you know, I do communications, then I will find the right people. Um, so it allows you to be more targeted in who you approach and who you um, have chats with essentially, which is really good as well. Richard here, uh, likewise, really love it. Um, and I know you have a session next week with uh, attendees, but you know, let's assume that only a proportion will, will attend that um, session. Um, it, it, would it be a good idea to kind of record a half hour how to guide and encourage? You've, you're already doing that, I can see Charlotte smiling. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and there's also um, a written how to guide, which um, is, it's, I think it's less actually. Um, helpful than than walking it through or watching a video on it but we'll share that as well with delegates and speakers and um and yourselves but yeah so all of these are going to be recorded and um just like with this one which will be shared with all staff and trustees on the advisors following it and um, it will give um, everyone the opportunity to to go back through and and um follow it the other thing as well is when you um open the uh, platform first time hopefully you saw that they're kind of quick user guides as well that you that you click through you can skip over it but we'll make sure that delegates are aware that that pops up and that they should um, sort of pay attention just to that very quick guide. But the other thing we're hoping is that because some of these elements are quite familiar, a lot of it looks like Facebook or LinkedIn elements. So hopefully um, it's not a totally new experience and the things that will be new are those networking tables, um, which again, we're kind of lingering on as, as Raquel demonstrated as well. So hopefully that, that helps orientate people. But um, yeah, absolutely we'll be sharing recordings, Richard, thank you. Yeah, can you can you send out a mail just giving the details of how this material will be shared again? I'm afraid I spent the whole time trying to register, get get on with my details, and I missed most of the of, the, of this presentation. I do apologise. So just let us know when we can join again and have another go. Absolutely, <laughs> and will be will be. Right. Hello, Charlotte. Hi, Godwin. Morning. Morning, good good afternoon from Tanzania. Yes, okay. uh, again, uh, just to say thank you so much. This is very, very good. Congratulations to you and your team. I just wanted to comment. Uh, so will there be during the day of the conference, if someone uh, faces a problem or a challenge, will there be someone standby where they can actually reach out to and get the support? If it's attendees or whatever. Yes, absolutely. So um, as well as uh, the uh, external engagement team who will be on hand, um, in every session there will be a technical support person there who's um, assigned from the set staff team um, to answer any questions that might um, ha sort of come up during sessions on Zoom or Hubelo um, technicalities. Um, we're also supported um, the whole time by a Hubelo uh, expert or consultant um, who will be there to, again, adjust anything that comes up or help any users that are having issues. 
and um, people are able to directly contact us as well with any concerns or, or questions that they have for them. So hopefully, again, there's quite a lot of mechanisms in place that will, um, yeah, hopefully allow us to respond really quickly to any questions or queries that come from, from delegates or speakers. Great, thank you. Just a quick question, Charlotte, for me, David Phillips. Um, if we've got sort of uh, internet issues with people in Africa, um, you know, um, bandwidth issues, yeah. um, how good is this with, with, with this sort of problem? Or does it help if people turn off the video and this sort of thing? So it's designed, um, this is created by um, an Indian organisation, a startup organisation, who have really just yeah, flown over the last six months in particular, and they work with clients from Microsoft uh, down to um, little old set. So they've got a really wide range of audiences and, uh, and uh, organisations that they work with. And because of that, it's specifically designed to be um, workable and usable on low bandwidth connections. And the other thing we think is that because we're keeping everybody on one browser page and um, we're not asking them to um, open additional browser links or go to other places, that again, hopefully that will um, make sure that the bandwidth stays fairly low um, and doesn't add in extra things. There's also... Um, we're aware, as you say, David, that it will kind of, uh, it will give up options to, to downgrade almost um, what you'll be seeing and accessing. So it will alter itself slightly to ensure that it's, um, yeah, reflecting the, the bandwidth um, capabilities in different places. So um, again, we're confident um, as much as we can be. The other thing will be is that all of the sessions will be recorded and they'll be directly and um, straight after all of the sessions finish on the platform as well. So if it cuts out midway through or you're not able to make one, you'll be able to go back to the platform at any time in the following months or so and access those. So hopefully there's a lot of contingency plans. Um, the other point to say is that on the um, agenda sessions, many of those sessions will um, just be watching the live feed of Zoom. So it will just be seeing the speakers um, and chairs presenting, it won't give the option like we're doing now to um, turn on your video or unmute yourself. And again, that's to help with bandwidth restrictions. Um, so yes, hopefully <laughs> we're trying to uh, cover all our bases. Thanks, Charlotte. That's first for very encouraging. Thanks, David. Any other thoughts or questions? I know it's quite a lot to run through on a Wednesday morning. So, I do. I just. I mean, are we able to get sort of data around how many people are looking at each session or interacting? I mean, it's, so I guess to sort of measure. Does this give us the opportunity to sort of measure what 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 is popular and what isn't popular, what's working well, what isn't working well, sort of thing? Yeah, the data is phenomenal. You can see by Raquel's uh, right smile that um, yes, we're really pleased. We, we'll have more data than we've ever had on any conference, and when we can see. Um, who's interacting in sessions, how many people um, have written question and answers. Um, and as you saw, maybe on the first page as well, there's sort of a little leaderboard of, uh, of people and how much they're interacting. Raquel's the winner at the moment with her crown on, but um, that will kind of pick up. And again, we hope that that will boost um, interaction with it. And we'll, we might run little competitions or uh, challenges as well for delegates. But the back end of it is um, just full of data and uh, reporting. So again, hopefully the, the post-conference report will be um, much more detailed and will give us a much better understanding of where it is that delegates um, perhaps land the most or the questions that they have um, and also the features that, that are most important to them. So yeah, we're excited to be able to look at that after the conference. And just to add to that, it's also um, we get to provide the different sponsors and exhibitors with good analytics as well. Um, so hopefully to encourage them to come back next year in terms of showing how many people they're being able to connect with. Um, this is a lot more precise and um, yeah, hopefully more interesting for everyone that, that comes. Are there any other um, thoughts or comments? Beyond all of the lovely uh, symbols I can see popping up on everybody's screen. <laughs> it looks really good. It'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, um, yeah. The, the, the future of conferences potentially. Yeah, it's been a real learning curve and, um, and hopefully, as, exactly as you say, it's going to be fascinating to see how it runs and uh, how delegates respond to it and speakers as mm. well and how enjoyable that experience is for them. So, um, yeah, 
we'll we'll wait with our fingers crossed and hopefully we'll have good news to report following it all. That looks great. Thanks. Thanks for walking us through that. No problem. I hope it's been helpful. And um, as yeah, as I said, we will share a um, PDF document with all of the um, overview information for the conference um, that I shared at the beginning. We will share the recording of this session for um, anybody who'd like to go back and have a look um, again. And um, again, for those who weren't able to join this morning. Um, and as I said, Anne, there are other sessions happening next week. So anybody who'd like to join those, um, I'll, I'll, send a, and I'll send an invite. Right, wonderful. Thanks, Charlotte. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining, taking the time this morning. And um, I look forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks. We're nearly there. <laughs> it's fast approaching. Um, so, yes, any other questions, please reach out um, to myself or the team. And um, just sort of to end on a huge thank you.